In this Dragonfly 4.1 tutorial video, we are going to make a macro that will let us find the best parameters for a certain image filter. We are going to do so with the uh, macro builder. So what we want to do is go in tools and open the macro builder. Once inside, we will need to name our macro. and save it. First thing we want to do is um, select our input folder. So what we do is create a folder variable with the name we want, create it. We will also export our data um, after trying different parameters. So we will also create an output folder variable. So to import the data set, we can go in the I.O. section in the folder. And the last block lets you uh, prompt the user to select a folder. So we'll select this block and change it for input folder. We can also copy paste this block with Control C and Control V and uh, change it for our output folder. We will also change the caption so the user knows what he has to choose. So now we have our input and output folders. So what we want to do is now load the data set from our input folder. So we will need to create a variable for the channel with type ORS channel. Um, we can then go in the act uh, object methods and the fourth block will let us load a channel from different options and here we will just choose folder so now we need to set our channel to that and put our block variable here Alright, so now we have our channel loaded, so now we want to um, select our filter and see what parameters we will change. So we can go in Dragonfly, Action, and select the Image Filter block. For this macro, we will test parameters of Vertical Destriping Filter. So when you change it to Vertical Striping, you will see what parameters can be changed. So for this test, we will change both the sigma foreground and sigma background. So for that we need two loops that will change those numbers. So we can go in iteration and select the third loop. We can copy paste it, this one, and put the all the blocks together. So we'll need two variables, one for the foreground and one for the background. So we can create both. sigma background which is an integer and uh, sigma foreground so we'll go here and just change both so we can choose uh, any range that we want so for this test we'll just do uh, let's say from 100 to 200 with steps of 20. So this is going to do 5 times for this loop and 5 times for this. So now that we have our two variables we can remove those blocks and put the variables that we created. and put them at the right place. So also we have to change our input and output. So for our input, it's gonna be the channel that we loaded. So we'll change it to this one and we have to create an output variable for a channel. So we'll name it output channel and change it to type or as channel. So we can dock it here. So now that we have our output channel, 
um, what we want to do is save them to uh, a TIFF image to see the result. So for that we can go in the action and select the save channel block. So for that we will need uh, the channel, the name of the file and our folder. So we know that this is going to be the output channel. Uh, we'll have to create a name also for each uh, file that we will create. Uh, we can put the folder right now, output folder. So now we need to create a name that is different from each file or else it's just going to overwrite the other file. So we'll have to declare a variable for a file name and it's going to be a string. We're going to set it. File name. So we want to um, have different names for each file. So what we can do is go in string and use this which will concatenate strings. So what we can do is for each file um, put the sigma value in the background value in the file name so they're gonna be all uniques. So first one we can do the foreground and add um, this. Um, now it's not going to be unique because there's also the background uh, value so we'll concatenate another string so we'll do this and do one more for our background value and we go here we select our background put it here and we'll add another string with the background value. Alright, so this should create the unique name for all the files. We also need to make sure that after each iteration the channel is deleted so we can create uh, another one for the next loop. So we'll go in object methods and delete our output channel after each loop. We also need to put the file name in the save. So this should do it. Uh, one more thing, we can also delete the input channel after all the macro is uh, completed. So now we save it and we can go and play the macro so we go in tools, macro player and we select the macro we just did now we open the macro player, we select our macro we press play, then we go pick the folder we want to apply the macro on. Then we can press choose, and now we wait for the macro to complete. When the macro is finished, we can go in the, our folders and see that we have our inputs and our output in the output folder. So now I'm gonna open both data set to compare the filter and here we can see the result from uh, the original and the applied filter that's it for this video and thank you for watching